Hey guys, uh, today we're going to talk about parts of the human eye and the ear. Uh, this is not an easy thing to understand in a 10 minute lesson, but I'll try and simplify it as much as possible. And this is presented by me, Kaushik Chari, and I'm currently studying my MBBS from Ames. And you can follow me on an academy using this link. So, moving on without wasting any time, the human eye is a roughly spherical organ, it is present in the orbits. And uh, we have uh, the three layers that make up the eye include the sclera, the choroid, and the retina. So, the human has three layers, two chambers, one is the equus chamber and the vitreous chamber, a single lens and a single iris. So, all of this might be just confusing for you right now, but you can just remember the names that you have three layers, the sclera, the choroid, the retina, two chambers, equus humor and the vitreous humor, one lens and one iris. I will come and show it, explain it to you in the diagram. So, this outermost layer that you can see that is uh, di diagrammatically represented in purple or blue, this one this is the sclera this is the sclera and the layer that is represented slightly below the sclera is the uh, choroid uh, the choroid is the layer below the sclera yeah right so this is labeled over here so this this layer just below the choroid which is in light blue is the sclera uh, the, the below the sclera is the choroid and the one that is labeled in red is the retina so uh, the choroid is actually not very clear in this picture but the outermost purple line that you can see you can consider it to be the sclera below it this is the choroid and below that is the reti uh, retina and uh, we have two chambers Okay, fine. Before going on to the chamber, the sclera in the anterior most part of the eye, it forms the cornea. So, the cornea is nothing but the extension of the sclera, uh, but uh, the only difference is the cornea is not opaque. The sclera is opaque. And if you look at your eye, the white part of your eye is the sclera. Basically, it's a very tough fibrous layer which is opaque. But the cornea is not opaque. So, the central uh, black or the uh, black portion in most of us and some people have a brown eyes, the brown portion that, that you can see through because the cornea is uh, transparent in that area. This is sclera that gives rise to the cornea which is transparent. And just behind the sclera, we have uh, just behind the cornea, we have this chamber which is the aqueous humor and behind the aqueous humor, we have the lens. So, the aqueous humor is bounded by the lens and the cornea. And uh, the ciliary body, the ciliary body is basically extension of the choroid. So the choroid gives rise to the ciliary body and these filaments that hold the lens in position. So if someone asks you what uh, what gives rise to the ciliary body, it is the choroid, the choroid layer of the eye. So the choroid layer gives rise to the ciliary body which holds the lens in position. And these filaments that you can see arising from the ciliary body that actually help in adjusting the lens uh, lenses diameter so basically uh, when these uh, ciliary bodies contract or relax the shape of the lens is altered and as you can imagine and you know from your physics that and the shape of the lens is altered you have a change in the uh, focal length of the lens and that is helpful in looking at objects that are far away from you and that are near to you towards you and these uh, the ciliary body also extends to the front of the eye to give rise to what is called the iris so if you look at your eye closely the part that is actually colored is the iris and the central part that is uh, between the central dark uh, circle that you see is the pupil so basically the iris leaves a part of the lens uh, uncovered so when you look through here this is what you see as the pupil so this is the pupil and the iris covers the lens partly that you see as the colored portion of your eye and the central circle black defect that you see is the pupil through which actually the light is entering the eye so the second chamber is the vitreous chamber which contains the vitreous humor which is a jelly like fluid so the vitreous humor on one side it has the lens and the other side is bounded by the retina so why are all of this present i will tell you in my next lesson which is how the sight actually occurs but for now just remember that these are the parts of the eye so the red colored portion is the retina the retina consists of uh, photosensitive cells cells that are sensitive to light and these are the cells that help us see so what are the neurons in the retina which type of neurons do you see in the retina the example of bipolar neurons uh, is the retinal neurons and these neurons the axons of these neurons come together and give rise to the optic nerve the optic nerve which comes out through 
uh, the eye and as you can imagine the point where the optic nerve comes out there is no retina covering that point and that point is known as the blind spot uh, so over here we do not have the neurons and this is known as the blind spot and if any light or any image forms or falls on this part that image will not be seen because there are no photosensitive part uh, photosensitive uh, structures in this area and there are some interesting experiments online you can just google it you can just type uh, how to locate your blind spot and you will get a number of experiments where you will be shocked that you actually have a blind spot in your visual field so uh, moving on what is the functional correlation the sclera gives toughness to the eye the cornea cornea it is helps in refraction of the eye and as i told you the cornea is transparent so it also helps in transmission of light uh, the lens the lens i just told you that the ciliary body adjusts the length of uh, the focal length of the lens such that you can see objects near to you or away from you so that is the main function of the lens uh, the choroid uh, the function of choroid is basically total internal reflection basically that means that the light that is not absorbed from the retina some of the light that falls on the retina is not absorbed so that light is reflected by the choroid back onto the retina because it has a, a greater a, um, greater refractive index so uh, the retinal neurons which type is a bipolar and the blind spot i just told you and what is the macula lutea the macula lutea is this central spot in the eye where uh, a certain type of cells are more concentrated i'll talk about macula more in my next lesson for now it is important to remember that macula lutea is a spot on the retina and the central most part of the macula lutea is known as the fovea centralis so we have the macula lutea and the central most part is known as the fovea centralis parts of the ear so the ear consists of three components the outer middle and the inner ear the outer ear outer ear ear is basically the pinna external auditory canal and the tympanum which is the uh, ear drum the middle ear consists of the malleus incus tepes and the eustachian tube and the inner ear consists of the cochlea and the vestibular apparatus what all of these are don't be overwhelmed by these terms as you can see this is the ear uh, this is the external auditory canal that conducts sound this is the ear drum the ear drum and the three ossicles the ear bones which are attached to this this is the malleus this is the incus and this is the stapes and the inner ear the inner ear this consists is the cochlea this is the vestibular apparatus and this is the cochlear nerve coming out from this and this eustachian tube connects the middle ear to the uh, nose and it is a uh, main function of the eustachian tube is to maintain pressure equal on both sides of the tympanum because sound is a mechanical wave it comes and vibrates the tympanum and the pressure difference on either side of the tympanum will affect how the tympanum vibrates so it is very important to maintain pressure on equal on both sides of the tympanic membrane that is the function of the eustachian tube so uh moving on to details of the cochlea the cochlea is a hollow tube with two and a half turns and it has two openings one is the round window and the oval window and as you can see the stapes is sitting on the oval window so please remember this anatomy the cp sits on the oval window and the round window somewhere opens over here into the middle ear and there is no structure on the round window so this is cochlea is a hollow tube which is that is actually taking two and a half turns so let's just go a little deeper i'll talk a minute and a half about this the inner ear is also called as the labyrinth so the labyrinth has two parts one is the bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth the bony labyrinth basically forms the cast or the out, outer structure of the inner ear and the membranous lab labyrinth has, uh, gives uh, rise to i mean the membranous labyrinth is like inside the bony labyrinth so the bony labyrinth forms structure within which we have the membranous labyrinth better understood in the next picture over here so please follow me here that this part that you see this is the bony labyrinth that i am circling with my pointer right now this is the bony labyrinth in the part of the membranous labyrinth is the the two membranes that form the membranous labyrinth one is the retinous membrane and the other is the basilar membrane the basilar membrane these two form the membranous labyrinth so in between these two is the membranous labyrinth that you can see here and the fluid of the membranous labyrinth that you should remember is the endolymph and and this is known as the scala media and the cavity above is known as the scala vestibuli and the cavity below is known as the scala tympani and this basilar and retinal membrane basically form the membranous labyrinth so if you don't remember anything if you don't understand anything from this just remember that we have two labyrinths membranous labyrinth and the uh, bony labyrinth and the fluid in between the retinous membrane and the bone over here this is the perilymph that perilymph is present in scala vestibuli and the scala tympani and the endolymph is present in the membranous labyrinth and uh, about the organ of corti i will talk about my next lesson for now it suffices to remember that the organ of corti is an organ of hearing which is present in the middle ear so that's it for this lesson and uh,
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग